We're going to have a real conversation tonight. I'm not going to sugarcoat it anymore. Um, the tone of Diverge Media is about the change. Uh, you know, I'm still going to do my best and our best to remain neutral and just give the facts as we know them. But I'm also the opinion columnist at Diverge Media, and, and that's what I do. I give my opinion. So enough's enough. I got to start being a little more vocal on what's going on, including trying to educate people um, on the money system and really some of the dangers and concerns we have and some of uh, maybe – the thought processes on what I think might be going on that maybe you haven't considered. It's, I, I mean, basically in order to believe in the current financial system, you need to believe in magic. Look, I have nothing. Poof. It's something. That's what they do with fiat currency. They go enter money in the system. And people think you're crazy because they have no concept of money, but that is literally what they do. They used to have to at least go through a printing press. They don't even have to do that anymore. Government says, I want money. They go to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve says, hey, I got money. Not really. They'd go, enter, you got money. And now you can pay me interest, which is real assets from your populace who will have to pay that back. They actually suffer from it higher food costs, all sorts of things that come with that. And they have to pay the taxes on it for the interest. And it's great for them, but that's literally what's happening. Just click. There you go. Fiat money. You're away. So, and I guess that's what, kind of what I'm getting at is just that people who are barely making ends meet now are just going to, it's just going to be harder. I think for people, if I put on my conspiracy hat, <laughs> for a little bit um we're heading to a point where dependency on government has never been higher and will never be higher and when you're dependent on something you're much more willing to take the beating that comes with it and the issue is they're at a point where you're, you're putting so many businesses out out of work like they're not going to come back from these lockdowns that means the people that relied on those jobs are not going to have a job to come back from those lockdowns. And then they're going to roll out something like universal basic income and say, but there's a big but in there. You need to do X, Y, and Z. And if you don't be a good little citizen, like we tell you to, we're not helping you. And when you're starving and your family's starving, you might look at that and say, Hey, I, I think I need to do that because you don't see any other way. But the, what you don't realize is by consenting to that, it will only get worse than it currently is. And what needs to happen is people need to say, no, I will not be a part of your system unanimously on consent. And the reality is shouldn't be paying taxes to a government that can't uh, be trusted to spend them on its people. Like we didn't pay or we don't pay taxes. So politicians can take and run with it and go spend it all around the world on everything under the sun except for Canadians. We don't – we never consented to that. We never consented to the ongoing lockdowns. We never voted for any of this. They're not even having debate in the House of Commons, and people want to applaud somebody. It's gotten to the point where you'll applaud a politician, conservative, liberal, Democrat, uh, new Democrat. It doesn't matter so long as they say something semi-contrarian to – uh, the lockdowns like, oh, I don't believe in full lockdowns. I think we should do like maybe, you know, targeted lockdowns and people are like, yay. And it's like, no, <laughs> that doesn't work either. Like, can we stop with the absolute nonsense? There's the recovery process that needs to happen, needs to happen now. And there, there could be a way to save the currency system. You want to know how you do it? You go, hey, uh, <clears throat> starting today, we're not paying back any dollars from the Federal Reserve because that's a criminal uh you know, cartel, in my opinion, they basically create something out of nothing and then say, you should pay interest on the something out of nothing. And we consented to it by getting rid of our own bank that used to do the printing for us. And on top of that, politicians went off and sold all the gold and silver and real assets that used to back things like your the gold standard for your currency used to have X amount of dollars. And that's the way it was supposed to work. You had X amount of dollars. Therefore, you had X amount of gold. That's how you could base your currency. And now it's just a global fiat free for all. Federal Reserve, we need X amount of money printed off. And I literally think the only reason the dollar and currency around the world hasn't completely fallen off a cliff is because they're all doing it at the exact same time. They're all just spending like gangbusters at the exact same time. And that's what keeps it afloat, in my opinion. 